Hi guys, I hope you've all had a wonderful Christmas and managed to enjoy a bit of downtime over these last few days. And welcome to our first video of our coaching tips throughout this third lockdown. Now we wanted to give you guys some challenges and some skills to practice over these next four weeks uh, so that we can use this time wisely. Now we're going to start with double unders as we've been using these in classes over this last month and we've given you guys some tips and drills to work on. So now I'm going to put this into a video where you guys can practice this on how often you should be doing them, how you would prepare for it, the length of your rope, all the way through to the actual drills of performing double unders themselves. So check it out, here's my seven tips for nailing the double unders. Okay, so before we pick our rope up, we're just going to cover how often you should be looking at practicing double unders safely. Now it's very easy to fall into the trap of just picking up a rope and practicing for 30 to 40 minutes and this is going to be putting you at a high risk level of causing yourself an injury. Now it's, an, it's a, a high impact exercise, so that is a light skill that's not too taxing. This is extremely hard wearing on your legs and your feet, so you want to make sure that you're warming up properly. Now what I would recommend for how often you perform your, your practice of the double under is about three times a week and anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes of broken um, training so that you guys just have a little practice, do a set, stop, relax, go again for about 10, 15 minutes. If you do this small and regular, you're highly likely to then be able to get the skill itself, but avoid uh, risk of injury as you're actually training your body to adapt to the exercise slowly and safely, rather than trying to smash out it as hard as you can straight away. So that's the first thing we look at is how often we do it, and the next thing we're gonna look at is how we warm up for the double under. Now double unders are exactly the same as all other exercises. We need to make sure that we're warmed up properly, and what we mean by that is that we're getting blood flow into that area that we're using. So first of all, we're gonna look at our feet. As we said before, this is a high impact exercise. If you start jumping over and over again, thousands of times in a row, you, and you do that without warming up, you're just asking for an injury. So there's a couple of small things that we can do straight away, whether that be marching on the spot, walking up and down your stairs. So if you're doing this at home, I'm gonna give you guys some drills here, but just replicate that. I'm gonna use a plate in a second. You guys can use any object possible just to replicate that same movement. So the first thing we're gonna do is some nice, simple calf raises, just coming up onto your toes and back down again. It's nice and easy, like I said, getting the blood flow into that area. It's not stressful, we're not doing any impact yet on the rest of our body, and that's just gonna get that area working. So your first exercise is your calf raise. It's a nice, static movement, getting the blood flow into that area. The second exercise we're gonna do is a plate hop. Now again, you can use any object you have at home, just as a few inches off the ground. We're gonna make this nice and easy. So to start off with, we're gonna jump up with two feet onto the plate, and then we're gonna step down nice and slow. So we jump up onto the plate, and then step down so we haven't got any impact on the reload. Jump up, step down, jump up, step down. Do that again, anything between 10 to 15 reps for three, four sets till you feel nice and warm. Okay, so once we've done the jump up to the plate and the step down, that's a nice, easy way of warming up the, the feet to be able to jump up onto the plate. We're now gonna look at the rebound as you jump down and up. So get yourself onto the plate or any object you've got first. And what we're gonna do now is jump down and back up. So you pause when you're on top of the plate. So you come down and back up, stop and back up. And if you do this again, 10 to 15 reps, three, four sets, we're now getting the feet warmed up, nice and ready for that rebound as you're going up and down. Okay, so now we've just gone from the plate from the floor up, and then we've gone from the plate down. We're now gonna add them together, where you're gonna go up and down, rebounding off the plate and off the floor. So it's nice consecutive jumping movements. Again, we're gonna do this for 10 to 15 reps for three, four sets, and this will make sure your feet are nice and warmed, ready for the double under. So you're gonna start on the floor, you're gonna jump off the plate, back onto the ground, but you're gonna rebound straight away, and Concentrate on keeping the movement pattern the same every time. So just up and down. And you're looking for consistency over the repetitions and sets for 10 to 15 reps. So that is going to get your feet nice and warm uh, throughout these reps. And as we start doing single unders, our shoulders and our body is going to get nice and warm as well. So that is how often we practice double unders and how we warm up our feet so they're healthy ready for this consecutive 
small and often practice that we're going to be doing over the next four weeks. Okay guys, right, we're now going to move on to the jump itself. So we want to be practicing correct movement. If you guys are starting and you're going to be practicing over these next four weeks of how to improve or get your first double unders, we want to make sure that you're practicing the correct jump because if you perform an incorrect jump over hundreds or thousands of repetitions, you're going to train your body to be doing that long term and that's not what we want to do at all. So let's start with correct movement and we're going to focus on the jump before we pick up our rope, okay? So what we're going to do is we're just going to start nice and light, jumping on our toes. So if you were going to do single unders of a rope, you'd be keeping your body nice and still, legs are straight and we're using our ankles. So we're on the balls of our feet, just up and down, nice and light. And that's what we're going to do for, again, we're going to increase the reps now for three, four sets. You're going to do that for 15 to 20 reps, just nice and easy, single unders, keeping that consistency throughout that set. Once we've done that, we're going to move on to what we call the floating jump. So it's the same thing, but we're looking for extra height, where you're going to have to put extra pressure through the balls of your feet into a nice tall jump. So what we're looking for is your body to remain straight, legs stay straight, and you're getting that extra elevation off the floor, so it should look like this. Okay, so that would be a good repetition of the floating jump. What we want to avoid seeing is if we lift our heels up first and our body is going to be going down and our feet are coming up and that's going to give you less air time. As you saw, my body was straight, it was nice and tall, that gives us extra time in the air for that rope to pass under twice. So this is what we don't want to see. We lift our heels up and our body's coming down. You can see, if you look at my head with an object on the wall, you'll see that my body isn't really going up very tall. My feet come up and my body comes down. So we're actually on my way down as opposed to coming up nice and tall. And you're doing that floating jump, which is gonna help us get the two whips of the rope. Now a drill that we use to practice this as well is called a penguin clap. So you're gonna have a nice tall body, squeeze your abs, body stays together, uh, sorry, legs stay together. What we're going to do now is look to do a double clap with our hands on our legs whilst we're at the top of that jump. If I was jumping like that with my feet coming down, I wouldn't be able to perform this. So doing that floating jump allows me to get two claps with my hands on the sides of my legs at the top of the jump. And this is what this will look like. So again, do three, four sets, 15 to 20 repetitions, nice and tall, like this. This is the front on. Side on, you see my body's nice and straight, hands to the side. Okay, so you see my hands there making contact with my leg whilst I'm at the top of the rep, not while I'm on the floor or close to the ground. You get that nice extra elevation uh, clapping at the side. So that is how to perform the correct, correct jump. And I would do that again in the second part of your warm up to make sure that you're nice and warm, you're prepped, ready to go. And once again, you're, you're practicing correct positions as you're jumping. So all about the jump in the double under. So have a practice, and then before we move on to this next tip. Okay guys, the next thing we're gonna look at before we actually use the rope is the length of your rope. So it's a nice, simple thing to do, but a lot of people get this wrong, and this will mess you up when you start practicing the double unders themselves. If you put your feet together, just so that you can measure this with consistency every time, you're going to put the rope up against your body. Now when you start double unders, you, some people use the top of the, uh, the handle, but I would suggest using the top of the wire where it attaches, because different uh, handles are different lengths, and therefore if you're using a different rope, you won't know the actual circumference of your circle of the rope itself. So grab that, feet together, pull it up against your body. Now when you start doing double unders, you want this part of the rope where it attached about level with your chest. Okay, so you'll see mine's a little bit lower, and the reason for that is that once you're comfortable with the rope, uh, the double ends themselves, you make it smaller, just a little bit at a time, so that you can keep your body straight, but it makes that double under a bit faster. When you first start double unders, that's definitely not what you want to be doing, because it's going to make it harder to learn the skill of performing the reps themselves. So put your feet together, consistency, body straight, stand on it, and then try and get this part of the, double, uh, the rope level with your chest. So that will be the length of your rope, and why we're doing that as well. 
Okay guys, the next tip we're going to look at is keeping a tight torso. Now what I mean by that is squeezing your core and your abs, getting a nice solid brace and we pull our rib cage down while we're doing the double under itself or while we're practicing our jumps, okay? So you start with that first, keep it all nice and tight. So you want your legs to be straight, arms to be still, so we're using our hands which we'll get to next and we're keeping our core nice, squeezed and tight before we start doing that. Now the reason we do this is because you imagine you're looking to keep the rope itself a nice tight dome so you've got consistency in the movement, it's the same height, width as you're performing that. If I'm relaxed here and my head's moving, my trunk's moving, my arms are going to be moving, obviously this transfers through to the rope itself so you're going to get different shapes and sizes, it's going to move back and forth and you're going to end up standing on the rope and you're going to not uh, understand why you're doing that or why you're not able to get the double unders and that's going to allow you again consistency of movement so you can perform the repetition. So try and keep everything nice and tight, squeeze your abs to your core, pull, them rib cage down, pull the rib cage down and then have a go at doing the jumps before you move on to the rope. Next we're going to look at is the use of the wrist when we're actually doing the double unders and performing the whip of the rope itself. So we've just looked at our tight torso, keeping everything nice and switched on. We, could, we looked at our jump before and we got you nice and warm. So now we're looking at the performance of the actual rope itself as we whip. What we're trying to avoid is using a circle of our arm and coming from our shoulder. Not only is this inefficient in itself and you're going to burn your shoulders out very quick, but you're also moving your rope again, the dome, up and down. And therefore you're very likely to stand on the rope itself. Whereas if you keep your body still, the shoulder still, and it comes from the hand and the forearm as you whip up and down, the rope itself will stay still as you do the double whip. So here's a couple of good repetitions. You can see what I mean by this, by using the wrist to whip up and down, as opposed to the shoulder joint in big circles. So check this out. This is using the wrists as you whip the rope itself. Okay guys, the last thing that I want you to practice, and we're going to use single unders to do this, is focusing on a fixed object. So you lock your eyes onto that object and we're going to use single unders to practice the consistency of everything else that we've just covered for all them tips. Now the reason we do this is that if you fix your eyes on an object and you're keeping your head still, you're more likely to keep your trunk, which is nice and tight, keep this still and therefore your limbs are likely to stay still as well. If we move our eyes, we move our head. If we move our head, we move our trunk. And if we move our trunk, we move our limbs. So all of them things come into inconsistency and you're likely to stand on your rope. So focus on one fixed object, keep that body still and use your single unders to practice that, keeping that all nice and tight and consistent throughout them reps. So again, raise this up now, go to 20 to 30 repetitions, do a few sets of that so you're nice and happy and that's going to give you a consistent base ready to start performing the double unders themselves. So here's what I mean by keeping everything nice and still and fix your eyes on one object. Okay guys, so that is my top tips for you guys preparing to perform a double under. We've done this in a safe, controlled, healthy way so you've got consistency in good positions before you pick up that rope and you start performing your reps. So have a go at all the stuff we've just covered from how often we're performing them, the warm-ups themselves and drills to get your feet ready for good healthy practice. Uh, the jump position that you should be in nice and straight and tall, have a go at that, practice them penguin claps as well, making sure we've got the length of the rope correct for you so it's not too long or too short. Uh, we're keeping our body nice and tight in the position of the single under as well so we can get that into a good habit, we drill that in over repetition. We're using the use of our wrist, not our shoulder, so I'm going to show you some good reps here of single unders and double unders so you can see the consistency of both. And then we've got focusing your eyes on a fixed object to keep our head still and our body and our limbs still as well so that we've got that consistency in the rope and your body. So all of these things are going to help lead towards a successful double unders. So have a go, have a practice. If you've got any questions, just comment below and I'll get back to you straight away. Otherwise, guys, good luck and I'll see you in the next video for the final part of how to learn your double unders.